In this video I want to tell you a few things, the things you should know about the Suunto 7 firmware update it has been receiving these days, around the 20th of April that started coming out. So now this is very interesting because one of the hmm, weak points of Wear OS has been usually that there is no sleep tracking and few other things about the, well, health tracking. Let's just put it like this, so a bit of a special health monitoring. Maybe that's the way to put it. <coughs> You get your step tracking, of course, with Google Fit or already with what Suunto has put onto the Suunto 7. That has been all right. You got a bit of a heart rate tracking with Google Fit, but that's like uh, every 10 minutes or something like that. Normally on a Suunto watch, you get a different kind of daily health tracking. A health tracking which gives you a true 24-7 heart rate tracking, as long as you're wearing the watch 24-7, we'll get there with Suunto 7 and Wear OS, and you get body resources indications via a first beat algorithm and this constant heart rate monitoring, and since relatively recently but still, you get sleep tracking. But you have not been able to get that on most Wear OS watches, not on the Suunto 7, but now with the latest updates the Suunto 7 has now become a real daily companion tracker. And you can see that also on the new Solstice watch face that it now has which is very pretty and offers space for three complications to be shown immediately. And I actually have one on there which is also showing something of a new feature that body resources tracking. So here goes a day. You need to add tiles for it. You can also just set it up in the Suunto apps diary. There are settings there for the sleep tracking, for the sleep goals and for the heart rate tracking. But it's nicest to set it up as tiles. Then you have the tiles which show you your heart rate over the course of the day, including during the sleep. You have the tile showing you your resources and how they were most likely gained during sleep or perhaps also while you were relaxing before you went to bed, for which you can also get a bedtime reminder. And you have the sleep tracking telling you something about how long the sleep was, about the average of your sleep about the resources gained during that sleep and in the Suunto diary and of course also in the Suunto app you get some indication in text, some explanation maybe I should say, of what your sleep was like, how the duration compares to your goal when you were asleep, from when until when, about the resources gained, about the sleep quality, some text indication again of that the average heart rate, the minimum heart rate, the sleep stages. There is quite a nice lot in there, which you now also get from a Suunto 7 Wear OS watch, which you get synced into the Suunto app, so you have that stored there. It works pretty well actually with, well, where the battery life is required. I have now been trying this out a new time again with the production firmware Suunto 7 since that got updated with that firmware. 
and usually recently, although admittedly on just around 6 hours of sleep, I go to bed or prepare for bed around 10 p.m. I turn on the airplane mode, the do not disturb mode and the what's the last one theater mode so that the watch does not have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connections and needs battery for that, doesn't try to update or do anything like that, so that I don't get disturbed by notifications even from the watch. An alarm still goes through, of course, if you have set that up. And with the theater mode, it means that I don't maybe do a gesture and get the screen to light up and wake up everyone since it illuminates the room very well, but I would have to push a button to actually get the screen to activate. I have actually found that it's a pretty good idea to just use the tap to wake or the button press to wake up the display, otherwise I use a whole lot more battery because I like to gesticulate a bit when I talk and while I teach I might do something with my arms and everything turns on the screen so that it uses more battery and it doesn't really have to. Of course it's I'm getting used to actually doing something, interacting with the watch and not just looking at it and getting it to light up, but it's not been too difficult to get used to that and it has certainly been worth it in terms of battery life. Now doing that I typically get up, then turn everything on again, all the notifications and turn off theater mode and all that. I put it on the charger for half an hour I have from around 5.30 when I usually get up to around 6 when I need to get going and when I do that somewhat regularly I never run out of battery and the watch seems to be very good at recognizing. It takes about 30 minutes for it to recognize okay this person is not sleeping anymore and to finalize the sleep, but being on the charger does not seem to disturb it in that it still seems to recognize when I got up and started doing something, stopped sleeping, and it's not like putting the watch on the charger tells it that it's not moving anymore and so it interprets that as sleep. No, that has been working very nicely. Battery life with that is still around the easy two days with some training a bit less so it's recommendable to always charge it a bit but 30 minutes in the morning is quite doable for a charge at least for me and after some sports before you go to the shower to clean the watch and put it on the charger again is also not much of an issue giving one's wrist a bit of time to breathe is not a bad idea anyways and so yeah this is Quite an update.